All right, if you're not familiar yet with AI coding frameworks like BMAD and you're building complex technology, then I genuinely think you're probably sleeping on one of the biggest improvements to coding workflows in this century. If I'm being honest, I've been building tech for the last five years and building with AI has significantly sped things up, but there was a whole lot of hallucinations and errors and a lot of manual checking associated with that. Adopting a framework like BMAD has cut that down significantly and it's also increased our documentation and our general development flow five times at least. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is unpacking BMAD V6. So we were typically working on BMAD V4, but this came out a couple of weeks ago and I've been practicing and playing around with it. And I think it's a significant step up from the V4. So what I'm gonna do in here is unpack a lot of the changes and also just walk through the documentation to explain a little bit more in human language exactly what's happening because these technical docs can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes and there is just a lot to get your head around to be able to use these processes correctly. This is gonna be a 15 minute or so walkthrough of the actual docs. And then if you wanna watch a view of me installing this in a project and actually getting started, you can watch that video straight afterwards right here. Before I jump into that, if you're not familiar with who I am, Long story short, my name is Adam. I started as a freelancer on Upwork five years ago. I taught myself to code and then I taught myself AI coding skills through Upwork and I did over 60 projects, landed in an expert vetted program and did over $100,000 plus on the platform, which allowed me to then go ahead and build an AI development studio, which builds AI powered custom CRMs for businesses to replace their SaaS stack. As well as that, I obviously am very passionate about AI and AI coding, and so I create educational videos for YouTube and my AI Builders Hub community on exactly that and how to actually freelance and make money with these tools. Now, I'm gonna cover briefly what the B-Man method is. I've got a number of videos that are operating with the V4, but essentially it's an AI coding framework, and what it's doing is it's storing a hell of a lot of do uh, documentation in a very, very methodical way, so that basically, depending on what kind of work you're doing, it can easily crawl your documents and in the context window or the chat it can inject whatever information is relevant to whatever task you're doing without overstuffing the, the context window with all this unnecessary information about your project that's not directly related to whatever task you're trying to do so the idea here is that uh, AI coding and LLMs uh, they operate better when each chat has as little context in it as possible and you can just think of it as confusing someone so if you're telling someone you know, all this irrelevant information where you're trying to get them to do a task, it can confuse them. So what the idea is here is we make a lot of little conversations. We break tasks down into very bite-sized, you know, small tasks that are easy to execute. And then we inject just the context or just the information relevant to that specific task to increase the accuracy of the AI model that's completing that task. And BMAD does that really, really well by building all this documentation in a very, very well thought out way so that all your architecture all your user experience and coding standards all that kind of stuff is stored and easily accessible to an ai model to increase the accuracy of what you're building especially as your project starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger and your code base starts to grow now what does this workflow typically look like so with the BMAD framework, we have a number of agents. These are similar to what was in the V4, but this is for the V6. So we've got the analyst, the project manager, the UX designer, the architects, the testing implementation agent, uh, and the scrum master. And then we've got the dev. So we have these four phases. Now, one cool thing that I saw down here is different projects have different requirements. So if you're building, for example, you're just building a landing page, you probably don't need to go into too much detail with some of these flows. But if you're building a more complex project, and to be honest, I think anything that's above a very basic page, like a landing page or something similar, you will likely need to go through each of these steps. And one of the biggest things that I hear is people complaining about, you know, having to go through and brainstorm and explain what they're doing and build this documentation. But I think they don't realize that for any scalable project long term, that documentation is 100% necessary to increase the accuracy of your AI. It's slightly slower because you can't just jump straight into developing things, but that pays itself back 10 times over in the long run if you go through and actually execute on these steps correctly. So in general, this four phase approach is phase one's discovery, brainstorming, competitor research, product brief. Now product brief is essentially a less scoped out, less technical, it's more of a business use case on you know your idea or the problem that you're trying to solve. 
Phase two is to build a PID or what's called a product requirements document. This is a little bit more of a structured scope document for exactly what you're looking to build. It's slightly more technical as well. And in there, we could also brainstorm uh, user experience guidelines, stuff like that from the UX designer. Phase three, solutioning. So that's building your, your architecture, your database, uh, your database schema, those kind of critical things, which are really, really good to wireframe prior to developing a project. Uh, and then we've also got the epics and stories. So the way the BMAD framework works is you have, you know, your, your grand project idea, whatever that is, it could be developing a complex application with multiple user roles, uh, all those kind of things. And then what we do is we break that down into smaller chunks, which we call epics, which are still large bodies of work. But in chunks, you can think of it like milestones, maybe. And then within the epic, we have smaller tasks, which are called stories. So they're, they're smaller still. And then within each story, we have the bite-sized tasks, which we were talking about before. So literally like tasks as small as adding a button here, you know, changing this text to this or bite-sized tasks, uh, which are really small so we can easily execute on each of those tasks. Then we've also got test design uh, and implementation readiness. And then phase four is the actual dev process, which is a cycle. So what happens is you've got your list of epics. So, and your list of stories within your epics. And then for each story, you run this story loop. So you go through, you use your Scrum Master to create the story, validate the story. Then the dev agent goes through and develops it. Then you can QA that or code review it. Um, and then essentially perform this retrospective action and then go through and basically continue that loop until all the stories in an epic are complete and until your project's complete. So long story short, that is how the BMAN method works. It's actually incredibly efficient uh, and you know, I've been building tech for a long time. The way this executes each of these steps is very, very well thought out, um, which is why I'm so, I guess, bullish and and so supportive of this framework uh, because the whole thing's free, it's open source, and it is genuinely game-changing for the Kony workflow. And I've had so many agency owners and people reach out to me Mentioned, you know, talking about they've they've migrated their entire software development agency to be using this framework to build build their projects for clients now, because it, it solves so many critical issues with AI coding and even documentation in general. Documentation has always been a struggle for dev agencies to stay on top of. Everyone hates doing it. This is doing a lot of that heavy lifting for you now. In this new method, so this is something that's changed since V4. There's this new process of basically uh, running this workflow init command or initialize, uh, which is like your entry point into running the BMAD framework. And this is kind of like a singular entry point that you can go into and the actual agents will check a bunch of documentation to understand exactly where you are in your development process once you've gone through uh, and and started started. So instead of having to remember like, oh, I need to go to the project manager, then I need to go to the UX designer. Instead of you having to make all those decisions, the actual AI can tell that based on, on the context documents that are in it. And when we actually jump into building the example, you'll see exactly how that works. So again, just to summarize what I talked about here, the BMAN method has a proven develop, proven development lifecycle, analysis, planning, solutioning, and implementation. And to be honest, I think anything that is more complex than like basic, basic apps will go through each of these four steps in most scenarios. Now, these are the typical Agents, I do not build games personally, so I don't use those last three, uh, but all of these look really cool. And another feature that's new is uh, I've seen down here, and we'll take a look in a second at what the major upgrades are, but the fact that you can use the, uh, I believe it's Tech Writer agent to visualize your workflows and generate an SVG diagram is really, really cool. Um, it helps you actually visualize what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm very, very excited to, to play with that some more. But yeah, these, these are the general agents. Now the core modules. So this is the core module, the BMAN method. This is the one that has all of these agents that we're talking about up here. But you can also build your own custom agents. Now this is something that I'm very interested in experimenting with, but I haven't done it just yet. Uh, building your own agents to, to, to do things. So here we can see domain specific solutions, legal, medical, finance, education, etc. And it looks like you can even actually share, soon you'll be able to share those agents in an upcoming community like marketplace like they have with you know custom gpts and stuff like that same with creative intelligence suite creative intelligence suite i haven't actually played with this too much myself either uh, but this this looks really cool so as you can see there's a lot to get your head around i've really just been focusing on the bmo method for now but I'm, I'm looking to get involved in these as well as the features keep going now we're going to jump into some of this more compl complicated uh, documentation in a moment 
but just a couple of the major upgrades so a lot more workflows that you can execute i'm very interested again in the visual workflows being able to build your own agent uh, agent teams looks really really cool uh, and just some of the the ways that the context is being stored and executed has definitely improved since the v4 uh, and I've, I've noticed some real improvements in, in the the building that i've done so far so i think it definitely is a worthwhile step up so first off, we're just going to go through the quick start guide. Now, I'm actually going to run this in a project in in another video, um, but essentially one line installation, I've already installed it in a number of projects. It takes you through, uh, essentially there's an onboarding um, or a setup that runs in the terminal. You can click enter on most of them, but we'll go through it in the live project. And it's, it's quite simple to set up. Then you get your first entry point. So you run the workflow in it, and it will basically take you through all the steps and ask you the right questions to set up your entire project. And then you go through the steps. So essentially you're, you're building your PRD, you're creating your architecture, uh, and then you're going through and you're basically implementing exactly like what we have here. Now this will essentially ask you again, I talked like the, I know people that are just product managers, um, and, and they actually don't do the dev side, but they use this specifically for testing because it will ask you all of the necessary questions that you need to plan out a project. So even if you're someone that's non-technical, you've never worked in a tech environment before, even scoping, you know, you can do a lot of the scoping process yourself now. The questions that this is asking you, especially if you're using, you know, Sonnet 4.5 or a semi-decent model, the questions and the kind of documentation that you're getting out of this tool is industry best practice. It's very, very clear. And if you approach any tech team with that kind of documentation, you know, they might review it a little bit, but you're going to be miles ahead of anyone else that's just writing some stuff in a Google Doc that doesn't really make sense. So it will ask you, you know, take you through and extract all your projects, uh, your goals, your, your, the problems you're solving, and it will, it will help you through a lot of those steps. And so, yeah, once you build your track, it builds this BMM workflow status. So when we jump in, we'll take a look, but essentially what's happening is you have all these different files and they're built in this yaml format uh, where they basically have there's a bunch of tools that each access agent has access to and there's all of these you can think of them as maps so all these different documents they're stored in central locations so you have certain files that essentially tells an ai agent if you want to take a look at our user uh, our user experience best practices go and go and read this doc if you want to take a look at our database architecture go and read this doc if you want to take a look at you know all these different things there's like a, a map and a guide for the ai agent to go and crawl whatever it needs and so in doing that instead of having to ingest every single one of those documents and bloating the context window it's essentially doing it in the smallest way possible and giving the AI agent a map if it needs to know more so then that we're actually passing the responsibility onto the agent to go ahead and check whatever documents it needs but it keeps that context window nice and small and everything's nice and organized and in the right place now just to talk really briefly through this is again just going through exactly how it works so step one initialize your work workflow uh, run the workflow init commands and then basically um, go through it will guide you through all of these steps then it's going to take you through phase one brainstorm project research product brief next up build your prd build your ux document build your architecture come through again it's it's it will take you through all these steps and what it's also going to help you do is understand what you're doing so if you're someone that's very technical you can go in here and, and control it a lot more because you understand exactly what you want if you're someone that's not as technical it actually, it actually asks you in one of the setup questions when you actually install BMAD, how technical are you? Are you beginner, intermediate, or expert? If you're a beginner, it's actually going to break things down and, and explain things in a, in a way that's going to be a lot easier to understand for someone that's non-technical. So if you're someone who's trying to get in the tech space and build your own solutions, I hands down think this is the best way to not only build, but also learn because you can ask it any kind of question and you have all that documentation that you can access and really go through this in a step-by-step -step approach. What it also has, so it's got this architect agent. Once you've completed phase one to three of this diagram here, you've got all your core documentation. You can run a test in the architect agent called implementation readiness that will scan all that documentation, make sure it's in the right spot and essentially just make sure all your folder structures and all your documentation is is best practice and in formatted in a way that the bmad framework expects and then that gets you ready to then go ahead into the actual solution phase or the implementation phase which is actually starting to execute and develop this application again you can see it here i i think the flow chart before is probably easier to understand than this one but in general really really game-changing workflow it's 
it's similar in nature to, in terms of the step-by-step process here, it's similar in nature to how that operated in the V4, but the way the documentation is being stored and the context is being injected, in my opinion, is, 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 is what the big step up is in V6. In V4, if you're familiar with the V4, we had a lot of core documentation. We had coding standards. We had, there was some core documentation that each agent kind of injected depending on the context, but this has taken that up another level still. And so I think that the the context injection and, and the way the documentation is stored in this is, is a big level up. And what I can do is quickly show you just a snapshot of what that looks like and how that's different in V6 in comparison to V4. So just a couple of the documents to show you in an actual code base of what's changing. So we've obviously got this workflow status. So you can see here that automatically, this is where it's keeping track of those four phases and it's referring to specific documents for each of the phases. So when you enter into a specific agent, it knows again, see how it's mapping to different files within your structure for different information. So that's just one of them, but you've also got like your index file. So this was done in a brownfield project, which means that it had already been uh, developed in the v4 of bmat actually but you see here again we've got all different like lists of files for each of the epics and this is kind of like a uh, a an a central file where it can then go to find access to other files that could be helpful uh for the build there's a lot of different like i kind of went through and there's actually a v6 to to um using that uh the what we looked at in in bmad to essentially review the implementation uh from the architect phase there i went through and kind of redid a lot of the documentation uh, but it's got access and it's got all these different context files which are essentially injected and mapped in in a really handy way so yeah that's just a little bit of a look as to you know what this is kind of looking like on the application side for the documents and then you know we can kind of see up here you can see a lot of the agents uh, and you can actually take a look through each of these and see what exactly, you know, what tasks they have. We can see here, these are each of the tasks and it will show, you know, so for example, for the validate Epic Tech context, you can take a look and these are the actual workflows, which are in the BMAD method workflows folder here. So we can see, you know, these are all of the workflows that are available, doc, document project workflows. You know, we can see the actual deep dive and see how it's referring to different folders. So this is how it kind of flows through based on what you're looking for. It'll flow through these different documents and then get referred to other documents and basically pull little bits of context out of your documentation, uh, which is super, super powerful. And that's where the, the power of these AI coding frameworks go a level above, you know, um, just just kind of winging it in cursor or using lovable or bolt or, or those kind of things they haven't got the level of documentation and context injection that these tools have so they just can't get that level of accuracy especially on bloated projects which you know have fairly large code bases so super bullish on bmad v6 uh, and i think you know anyone that's interested in really getting involved in AI coding and building well-documented proper production grade apps really can't ignore AI coding frameworks like this because at the end of the day anything that's production grade needs to have proper documentation and uh, pro proper traceable architecture and something that your entire dev team you know can actually get inside and, and understand exactly why things operate the way they do and if you're going to make AI a significant part of your coding workflow I think you need to have one of you know some sort of of guardrails and coding framework like this BMAD v6 to to actually build successful projects so i hope you found this video helpful if you're interested in learning more about BMAD or freelancing you can obviously check this channel out i've got all sorts on you know how to sell yourself as a freelancer and how to sell ai skills but also the actual technical side of things and how to actually get started and get involved you can also check out the ai builders hub which is where i've got a structured framework on how you can actually learn these and if you're interested in, you know, checking out our agency and, and checking out the demo on how we actually build internal tools for, and systems for businesses off the back of this BMAD framework, you can go and check out that website as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.